the PlayStation. I hate this console so much, but that is because I wanted to like it so bad as a kid, but just couldn't. For those that watch this channel regularly, you know that I had an N64 growing up, and eventually an Xbox. Yes, I never owned a PlayStation 1 growing up, but I had plenty of family members that did have one. So why do I hate this console so much? Because the games never f worked! I have nightmares just thinking about all the times my cousins and I would pop in a game, try playing it, but would end up getting stuck on this screen. Just watching this now on YouTube, I feel like my computer's going to freeze up. We would try time and time again to get these games to load past the PS startup screen. The issue was Sony used CDs instead of cartridges, which I suppose isn't an issue considering that CDs could hold more storage for games, but it didn't take much for these bad boys to get scratched and never work again. Ready? Yeah. Let's do this. Alright, be careful. WHAT ARE YOU DOING?! YOU FOUND A GAME! <laughs> PS1 CDs is probably what sparked my hatred for CDs back in the day, and also solidified my love for the N64 at the time. I never had issues with my N64, as opposed to the never working PS1, plus if we did get a game to work on the PlayStation, it took forever to load. All my N64 games booted right up and worked. Now, the PlayStation obviously wasn't a bad console considering how popular it was selling over 102 million units in its lifetime, which lasted 11 years, mind you. I don't know, maybe my experience with the PlayStation is unique and we just had bad consoles. Let me know your experience with the PS1 in the comments down below. Either way, the reason why I wanted to love this console so much back in the day was because of how many good freaking games were on this puppy. Crash Bandicoot, Spyro, Medieval, Mortal Kombat, Resident Evil, Silent Hill, Final Fantasy VII, which I'll probably never play, Tomb Raider, Metal Gear Solid, and so many others that I would have gotten the chance to play as a kid if the CDs didn't scratch to hell after somebody breathes on it. Okay, sorry, I'm done ranting. Just know that is what my relationship has been with the PS1. But this video isn't about the PS1 specifically, as you can tell by the title of this video. You're probably wondering, why the hell are you playing the Emperor's New Groove for the PlayStation if you hate it so much? Listen, I don't hate the PlayStation. I hate that the games never worked, okay? There's a difference. And I'm playing the Emperor's New Groove because it's the best damn game on this console. <sighs> yeah, I bought this game on eBay. When I was younger, one of my cousins had a demo disc for the PS1, and it had a variety of games that we would pop in and play a lot. One of them was this gem here, Emperor's New Groove. I don't remember much playing it as a kid other than for some reason we thought it was awesome and always wanted to play the full thing. The only problem was as a kid playing demo discs, I couldn't wrap my head around the fact that these games actually do exist and I could play the full game back then. We just settled for wow, that was a fun 10 minute experience, let's do it all over again. So 20 years later, I bought it. I regret my decision. The Emperor's New Groove is a Disney game that follows the movie with the same title that I'm sure we all have seen starring John Goodman and David Spade. Yeah, it's a pretty banging movie with a lot of funny moments, but this game, however, is not banging in any way. This title is a puzzle platformer that was made for six-year-olds. You play as Cusco the Llama who controls, like, a game from the 2000s. I didn't have many expectations for this game going into it, and frankly, because of that, I don't think I hated it as much. Your movesets are really limited. You can jump, charge dash once you collect these llama heads, standing punch, roll, jump kick, and you can pick up items on your back. Cusco doesn't control too bad for the most part. It is pretty easy to handle, but it's not like this game is super intense on its platforming elements. The camera is really easy to control as well, being able to rotate it in both directions to accommodate whatever situation you were in. Graphically, this game is ugly. Like, really, really ugly. Yeah, it's a PS1 game from the 2000s, not to mention it's a Disney game, so it's gonna be ugly. You collect coins throughout each stage, which can increase your dash bar, and that's about all they do. You also have to find these red idols of Cusco's face, which are keys to getting past locked doors. There are also NPCs you can talk to in each level that give you tips on how to play the game. Good lord, the voice acting is rough. Cusco doesn't do a bad job even though it's not David Spade, but man, I was blown away at Pacha's voice. I can't show you the way out of the village unless you build Cusco-topia somewhere else. It's rough. But the best part is, is that the guy that voices Pacha in this game is a really good voice actor named Bill Farmer. Don't know him? Yeah, you do. He voiced Goofy in a Goofy movie. At least they got Krunk and Yzma's voice actors. Most of the puzzles in the game are really easy with not much to them, but one in particular which I'm going to spoil because, let's be honest, you're never going to play this game, has you placing drums and bouncing a ball into a statue's mouth. Then later on you have less drums and end up bouncing the ball on your back, all the way into the statue's mouth. 
I know, this game blows. But hey, some of the dialogue lines made me laugh a bit for how big of a dick Cusco is to everyone. You get bits from the movie which were fun, the roller coaster levels at the end were kinda fun. Never mind, they were awful. But hey, the game never stopped working for me so I could honestly say I've beaten my first PlayStation game. Yeah, that's a lie too. I didn't actually get to beat the game. In the end, you race Cat Yzma to the potion that turns you back into a human. But apparently our race was too close and we both jumped at the potion at the same time, turning my screen white and giving the game an aneurysm. It was soft locked at this point because I kept redoing the race, but the potion was never on the pedestal again. And I wasn't about to redo the entire last level, which sucked. Well, probably not the best game to play to try to decrease my hate for the PlayStation, but hey, I bought a PlayStation 1 game, so that's a step in the right direction, right? Nope, that's it. I can't do it. I just can't. No more PlayStation forever! <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Also, a big shout out to our Patreon supporters. Always appreciated. Anyways, thanks for watching, and as always, keep it rad.